I'm Christina, welcome to The Void. This is a channel that usually features interviews with interesting heavy bands, little music documentaries and the like, music videos, etc. Um, as we're all sort of locked down, like a third of the world, I thought it might be fun um, just to start talking to you guys. Um, I have pretty much, if you're new here, I have pretty much the best YouTube comment section on the internet. It's like a bunch of people who love music, who are respectful and praise and use grammar and sentences and just super respectful and just cool. And it's probably the bands that I end up interviewing. They're really amazing. The music's really amazing. So it brings these sort of amazing people. So I thought, I fucking love you guys, man. I, I wake up and I'm like, oh, you, you dug the thing. You liked what we did. Yeah, so maybe we could hang out. You know, fuck, we're all alone at home. It's, you know, you start to go a bit nuts. I kind of, I'd rather talk to the internet. So I wanted to talk about, obviously, the biggest thing in the world that is happening right now, um, which is us being locked down and this being a global pandemic and basically nothing ever going to, is nothing ever is going to be the same. And I think we all know it. Um, I think there's not much argument about this. This is the most insane shit ever and I'm Australian, we started the year um, with like 80% of our country on fire, um, a billion animals dying, um, not being able to walk outside because the sky was full of smoke. Do you know how weird that is? Like it's, that's, but like that looks like a pocket, like the Diet Coke of apocalypse compared to what's happening now, which is fucking terrifying. I don't need to tell you that. Don't watch the news. If you're um, like me, You've spent way too much time like dwelling on watching this thing unfold. It's fucking terrifying. Um, I think the first thing I think that is worth discussing, and I'd rather tell you guys than random Uber drivers. Um, the first, <laughs> the first thing that I think is worth uh, discussing is um, the resemblance to war. Um, is really significant. Um, I think this level of casualties, um, you know, the real human life cost. And one of the big differences is I'm not smiling because I'm happy. It's just, just trying to cope with it all like everyone is. Um, the really interesting thing is the front line of this war are people that aren't going in with guns. They're people who are going in to save people's lives. If we did not have medical professionals right now, the, can you imagine like what the death toll would be if we didn't have these people who had taken the Hippocratic Oath, which is do no harm, right? That's like the thing that doctors take when they become doctors, you know? And it's like, it's, oh, look, I've got all the respect in the world for um, people who uh, serve their country and all that kind of stuff. I don't have any respect for the American war industrial complex. I'm not getting into this. I'm not talking about like, we're just not going there. Um, but what these people people have done, even before they got to this point, to put themselves on the line, to, to have to look at people in the eye and and deal with life and death every day in a way we never will. And I've always um, I've always thought emergency room doctors were the coolest people in the world because no matter how like you're bleeding, you, you know, I've been to the emergency room, whatever. Whatever was going on, they were like the chillest people. I've ever dealt with I was like felt instantly calm whenever I've been sick being around like emergency room doctors and it's like um the thing that like I think is one of the most confronting things about this is it's like they're they're not being protected people just like I'll look at America what which is you know I love America I love American music I love American bands 40% of this audience, according to YouTube, is American. I fucking love you guys. Like, I, you know, I'm most culturally imperialized person ever. I watch way more American everything than everything else. Um, but to watch this shit unfold and watch him watch, I'm not just saying his name, but to watch um, money be dedicated to like, um, like the really top tier corporations and stuff when there are people in fucking hospitals like saving people who can't get a fucking face mask like fuck you you know like fuck you these are people and like oh it just breaks my heart so fucking hard like I can't I'm not alone here right like I saw some video with like this Italian um, emergency room doctor and was like haunted by his face for days they're like well how do you feel and he's like I, I come in here every day, I'm so stressed and it's like, I just worry every day that I, I'm never going to be enough, like no matter what I do. And you just go like, I don't know, I'm not, look, I need to get emotional with not my, by myself, this, you know, 
we can at least do this together, right? And and that's the other thing um, that I think a lot of people um, are real. Well, I mean, a lot of us know we're world citizens. This has been a global world for a very long time. This isn't about country versus country, especially in this instance. It's the first time as a world we've had a united enemy, and that's not. <sighs> It's not a great thing, right? But like at the same time, um, I think the borders kind of, <laughs> it's this irony of the borders kind of vanishing and yet the borders being closed and, and that fucking, oh man, that is just really hard. Um, just on a side note, like I've always felt like the world was there. You could, it takes a day to get there, but you can go and see. I've got like friends around the world that I would have liked to see. Um, and I'm like, who knows how long we're going to be trapped in our different countries. But yeah, I think it's really cool to see, um, to, I don't know, to, we're all the same, man. We've, you know, we're all going to die. Hopefully not soon. We've all want and need the same things. And, um, and that stuff is really important. And I think, um, this whole experience, right, is another way of kind of demonstrating something which is, uh, a really like a very much a, t a part of our time. And I think why this is the end of an era it's like capitalist democracy, they're almost the antithesis of each other. Like capitalism is relentlessly self-interested. It's built on developing like a ruling class and a peasant class and deceiving the shit out of them to basically do the bidding of the ruling class or whatever. So um, we live in a capitalist society. There's, there's a lot of benefits. You can elevate yourself. Obviously, the path to elevation and economic mobility is different for different people. Um but that's a story we're not going to go down the path of because it's fucking complicated. Um, and then democracy, which is about, you know, people choosing their leaders and people choosing things together and about achieving a critical mass. And one of the, I think the, that's one of the most important principles of democracy is you must develop a critical mass to change anything. That's why, like, watching the, the extreme right and the extreme left fucking whinge and yell at each other all day which is the most waste it's just the biggest fucking waste of time and at least it's died down this cult of fucking gleeful outrage and just useless toddler bullshit and it's like you can't do anything in a democracy unless you win over the fucking other side so we all have a problem with who's running it like America collectively as a world. Okay. And this isn't just about you. You know, it's not just about America. We fucking love you guys. We care about you guys. You deserve fucking healthcare and wages and shit like that. But he affects the entire world. He, he will, your leader will dictate environmental policy. Um, in this instance, like, um, <laughs> I'm almost positive in any other term or whatever. Right there would be leadership. There would be America taking all the other nations together. They would form a plan together and he would take the figurehead role and things wouldn't be the shit, like the, the, the dangerous lethal shit show they are. But I'm not, look, I don't want to go down this whole political rant because I will and I don't want to. But what I'm trying to get back to is essentially um, the battle of human interests versus corporate interests um, is the fundamental issue at the heart of um, democracy and I think watching what is unfolding at the moment is this is just the the darkest most intense version of human interests versus um, corporate interests and if you even look to the situation where there is this shortage of medical medical supplies um, in America that supply and demand there's this there's all this supply chain bullshit that you know that's capitalism affecting it human interests I mean that, that fucking dude, man, like saying the churches should be packed. I mean, what do you want? Like a bunch of fucking old ladies in fucking church dying? Are you fucked? Like, it's like the, the plot of a fucking Batman movie. Like you are the worst Batman villain ever. And it's just like, I can't even compute it because it's like most of us in the world know what's up. People are fucking helping each other. You know, we're looking around the world and it's like, I try and get through this by thinking about it on the other side. And it's like, all these cities will never be the same. Like I've always... I've never been to New York. I've dreamed of it a lot. I've spent a lot of time doing that, but I just think that it's never going to be the same. But like the only way I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm just going to get emotional with YouTube. Um, I try and think about like next Northern summer or whatever. And you go, I hope that this stops or whatever. And like you go and, you know, like kiss all the Italian nonnas, you know, let them cook food for you. They, they love that shit. You know, go to New York and just hug everyone and go to Europe and fucking kiss everyone and just, 
you know, fuck, I just try and like think about that because it's really hard. Also like, okay, being alone is hard, but I don't want to like get dark on you. This is going to get dark. Um, if you think you're alone, just think about people with severe um, cases of this virus and they're in a hospital and they can't breathe and they, no, they can't hold the hand of like their loved one and you know, their loved ones have to watch from a distance or not even watch at all. Like that, that is a level of aloneness that most of us in a comfortable Western thing that hopefully we'll never know. So however you are, if you've got a roof over your head and air in your lungs, you're doing pretty good. Like seriously, and fucking remember that.